Hi, welcome to Pitch It This. I am Chenda. I'm um, recording from at home. And I'm Danaea, and I'm recording at the Billie Jean King Library. And Picture This is our monthly conversation sharing great books from our picture book collections, airing the second Wednesday of the month. Danaea, let's get started with this session. What do you have to share? Okay, so my first book is actually a an ABCs of Kindness. So this is written by Samantha Berger. Um, and so the great thing about this book that I really loved is that you get 26 ways to show kindness. And for every letter, there's something that you can do to show your kindness towards other. And I really love this book that um, a parent and child can talk with each other. And it's a fun thing to do where you can pick one thing out of this book and you can do it every day. Um, illustrations are very beautiful and there's a lot of things that you can talk about. Um, say for example, H is for helping with the chores and giving hugs. So there's a lot of things that you guys can do together and um, to show kindness to others. And this is a really great thing for the year. Um, also for my next book is Joy. And Joy is written by Yasmin Ismail and it's about a kitten who finds Joy playing with her ball of yarn. And all of a sudden she hurts herself. And the mama cat comes and comforts her and um, gives her cuddles and um, words of encouragement which is really nice. And I thought this book was very relatable for young children because sometimes little kids, they get really into the moment of playing and they accidentally hurt themselves. And you know, you always have somebody coming to make them feel better. So I thought this was a really good book and it's also very encouraging for uh, little ones to just get up, even though you get hurt, just get up and do it all over again because you know, we wanna have joy and that's how we find joy in something. What about you, Chenda? Do you have any other books to show us today? I have plenty of books, but this one is one of my favorite this time of the year. It's Magic Ramen. It is a nonfiction book by, written by Andrea Wang. It's the story of Momo Fuku Ando. He's a Japanese um, person that lived um, after World War II and he saw how um, there were long lines on the sidewalk um, after World War II and people, um, food was scarce. And um, it just kind of remind me a little bit of um, what we've been seeing in the news. People are lining up, waiting for food. And anyway, Momo, um, Mr. Ando um, thought that, um, you know, he has to do something about this because it's so sad. And he went home and he couldn't forget about the the hungry people, and he said, the world is peaceful only when everyone has enough to eat, he realized. And that's what he set up to do for um, so many years, and he worked on it. And it shows all the different experiments he attempt to make with different ingredients, different techniques, and he kept at it, and he kept at it, and he did it for 12 years using different methods, and until finally he, um, was paying attention to what his wife was doing with her um, temp fried tempura. If you ever have sushi, you know what that is. It's really crunchy and nice. And then he used that technique and um, applied it um, to applied it to um, the noodles he was trying to make, and it made wonderful, great um, tasting instant noodle and his whole family helped him. And after 12 years in 1958 was when he finally made it to perfection. And then everyone got to enjoy on those ramen, poor people, children, busy workers, and even royalty. And it was nutritious, tasty and convenient. And I have to say on some cold days or nights, sometimes after work and you don't want to cook, I have my own ramen noodle. It used to be in packages, but now I move up to bowls of um, noodles and I can add eggs for protein or even um, um, meat. And 
vegetables to make it a little bit more healthy. So it's really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. And then following um, Ando, how he has to experiment with many different ingredients and techniques to try to accomplish, um, you know, making tasty um, ramen. He used a lot of the um, techniques that's in STEM. And this series written by Andre Betty um, is a really wonderful book to um, start out um, kids to inspire them to become inventors and innovators. Um, this one is the latest one is more of um, like uh, kind of like um, community service. Sophia Valdez, Future of Prez. And Sophia lived in, of course, in the um, Blue Creek Valley with her grandfather. And she was always very helpful and very conscientious until one day her grandfather and her walked up and found this horrible pile of trash, this Mount Trashmore, and she got an idea of how to get rid of it, but how do you get rid of it? So they all decided, everyone gave her ideas, but what they wanted was a city park. It takes a lot of work. It took the whole community and it took her learning to do what she has to do, even though she was afraid and it took a lot of effort, but she kept at it. And then it came with a lot of community help. You know how a lot of changes are happening in our community and that's how we have to help each other. So the class helped and eventually they all got their city park. It's called Citizens Park and it's really wonderful just teaching in the community. So that's a really cool one. And there's tons of um, um, other um, titles, Ada Twist, Scientist, Rosie Revere, engineer, Iggy Peck, architect. And then now the exciting thing is the series is now being released in the beginning chapter books for second or third grade readers. So it continues with the same character in Ms. Layla Greer class. So I hope you check it out. And what do you have, Tanea? Well, I have Tanea. Oh, sorry, here I am. Sorry, I had to mute myself. Um, but I have two more books that I want to talk about. And the first one is The Hidden Rainbow. It's by Christy Matheson. I love this author. She's really good. And this book right here is an interactive picture book. And um, it's not only a picture book, it's a concept book. So it actually it has all the colors of the rainbow and there's a lot of flower identification. So in this book, she's asking you to really interact with the bees and you can do counting. So there's like four bees are eating pollen. Now that yellow has come out. So you're really um, seeing a lot of color, a lot of, um, of just everything. I was really amazed with this book and it's very simple. I always love her writing because it really um, just is very simple and so colorful. She's um, also written the book Tap the Magic Tree. So that, um, that's a really popular one too. So um, if you ever want, check this book out. It's another good book to have. And um, my second one is The Three Little Yogis and the Wolf Who Lost His Breath. And it's a fairy tale to help you feel better. And this is written by Suzanne Verde. And the story is about a wolf who wants to huff and puff and blow that house down, but he doesn't, he can't find his breath. And instead of being scared, the three little pigs help Wolf try and find his breath. So they help him by telling him, well, maybe you should meditate a little. So they teach him how to meditate. They teach him how to do some um, yoga poses. And there's all these things that they're kind of just helping him do. But you have to check it out to find out what happens at the end to see what he does. And um, I really love this book. It was really good. Um, and if you ever want to like um, 
teach your child how to find their inner breath, this is a great book because, oh, by the way, you have three little yogi pigs helping you do that. And there's some cool yoga moves in here that you should check out. And what about you, Chenda? Do you have um, other books to show us? Well, I have a great book that follows that. I hope the wolf uses his breath if you know the story of the three little pigs, not to blow something down. But, you know, having your breath, it works well with every situation you're in. Uh, this book is mad, mad bear. It's the first book written by Kimberly Gee of this series. She has a new one now that just came out, Glad, Glad Bear. But I'm gonna talk to you about Mad, Mad Bear because little bear here is I love his expression. Oh, I've seen those faces at preschool story time before when somebody is so mad because nothing is going his way. Oh, look at him. He is has his arm crossed. He was he was the first to leave the park and he has to go home and take a nap instead of being outside. And he has an owie. And then guess who? Oh, the worst is he has to take off his favorite boot to take a nap and leave his stick outside and he's so mad you see him oh my goodness oh <laughs> and then he practiced his breathing exercise probably mommy has to do it with him or daddy too because he's so cranky and he's crying and he takes a breath and another breath and you do it along with him and then like a balloon he lets it all go and he gave his little teddy bear a hug and he felt so much better and it doesn't hurt that mommy and daddy and now he feels quiet with mommy and daddy and takes a nap and after the nap and a little snack oh he wakes up he feels all better that we wish we could all feel better oh then he picks up his boots and go right out to play again and with his stick so this is a great book to share and how to practice our breathing, our breath, when our emotion gets the better of us. So that's by Kimberly He It's really wonderful. You have to check out Glad Glad Bear and what he's glad about. And this one is a book, Skaya and the Bees. It's written by Maribeth Boltz. It's really a great book about bees and the benefits of, um, you know, people who um, keep bees on their rooftop or in their garden. But what if you have somebody who's afraid of bees, you know, because they've been stung before and it hurts. This little girl here shares an um, apartment with her dad. Her dad keeps the bee because he says, you know, bees pollinate that apple and the blueberries and all the fruits and vegetable need to be pollinated to grow. So they actually, bees is a necessity for us to have fruits and vegetable and to help things grow. And there he is in his bee suit. But oh no, you know what? She is afraid, or even though her dad is a real beekeeper, she's always been afraid of getting stung. And then she finally had the courage to go up with her dad and she got stung again. Oh, it, it hurts. But then she kind of keep calm and just let it go. And then her dad help her deal with her emotion and her fear. And she says one day she's gonna go up there and help again. So that's sometimes we have to do what we have to do because we know it's good for you. Because that I feel Oh, it's a mystery, isn't it? That a bee, just an itty bitty insect with one stingers, two pairs of wings and six hairy legs can make honey, not just make honey, but helps our fruit and vegetable grow. So I hope you check this book out. It's all about getting over your fear. Ah, alrighty, what do you have, Danea? So I have a book that is written by Min Lee and the title is called Lift. So um, this style of picture book is kind of like a graphic novel or comic style where there really isn't a lot of um, words in it, but 
that the pictures show a lot of emotion and a lot of action. Um, so I don't know if you ever heard that saying, it's a new year and a new me. So if sharing is on your list of wanting to do this, um, do that, this book right here is a great example. Um, the, so it's, there's a family and there's an older girl, which is a sister, and her name is Iris. And she loves pushing the buttons on the elevator. And one day she had to share with her little brother because he started, he got the parents saying, oh yeah, go ahead. And you can start pushing. And she was not happy as you can tell in this one page. So one day she hit all the buttons and I'm not sure if that's what broke the elevator, but they had to have a technician to come out and the technician threw away one of the buttons and she took it and she put it in her room and she put it in her wall and she could push a button all the time and she doesn't have to share with anyone. So then she ended up going on all these adventures, but I can't show you that because you have to check it out. So you have to see what adventure she goes to. But the whole point is, is she willing to share these adventures with her brother? So you're gonna have to go and check out this book and to see not only the type of adventure she goes on, but if she's willing to take her brother with her that really does love her a lot. But sometimes I think even sharing is a really new thing for new siblings. Um, and so this is a really good book. And even when there's not a lot of words, sometimes pictures can only show you, uh, as they say, like a picture is worth a thousand words. So. Yeah, this is another book. And we have a book that we both actually picked before even showing each other. And I'm gonna change our screen to dual screen so you can see what we picked each other. So I'm gonna count it through. We're gonna throw up this book together, okay? So one, one two, and three. <laughs> going up. It's a wonderful book. We both wanna talk about yeah. it. <laughs> It's written by Sherry J. Lee and illustrated by Charlene Cho, Cho, C-H-U-A, Che, Che, wonderful. I loved it. So this was a really, it's a really good book when you, I mean, if you take a look at all the pictures and, mm -hmm. and see like, you know, what's going on in an apartment. Um, there's just a lot of things going on in this book, but you can take a lot. For me personally, when I was reading this, um, I felt like this teaches others to be patient because none of us really like to be on an elevator that long. <laughs> and, um, you know, they're going up to a celebration. And so I felt like, oh, they're giving and everybody has a sense of belonging in that apartment complex and they're all coming together for one thing. So um, I thought this is a great way of like showing like, hey, there's like, we can all come together for one thing and let's make it happen and it's all in an elevator <laughs> mm -hmm. my favorite part is um learning uh, being introduced to new something new that i don't know that i have to look up so one of the family mr and mrs hubby um on the fourth floor and their grandkids they brought something holding in a big bowl it's called gulab janam it's like Indian food, a dessert, and I had to look it up and it, I found it on the internet. You have to look it up too if you don't know what it is. It looks delicious. And I hope, um, you know, once COVID, you know, is got done, we can go to the, um, the Indian um, district in Artesia and maybe I can go and order. Uh, um, it's um, gulab janam. It's a dessert that looks delicious. And oh. so, and it's, um, it's the favorite dessert of the kids in the book. I know, I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> and then um, my other favorite part is like, everybody's finally in the elevator and I can't believe how many people, are you ready to open yours? Ooh, <laughs> right, and how many people are in the elevator? <laughs> well, oh my goodness. You know what? I did you count how many people were in the elevator? I know it's just like <laughs> it's so many people. 
Okay, so if you check this book out, you'll have to take the time and reread it maybe and count how many people got onto the elevator. It's so fantastic. All the people that came to the party were in the elevator with the, um, the little girl and her father. It's so wonderful, you see. And even dogs, and, there's dogs and cats and other animals too. Everybody's just so, having fun. <laughs> yes, it's so wonderful. And I can't wait for us to be able to do that someday. I'm a, I imagine there will be a lot of parties going on after everyone's get, um, get vaccinated and it's become oh, yes. for us to go up. Yay, enjoy our neighbors. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shanda, you have okay. a couple more books to talk about, so I'm going to change this right. speaker view. Okay, and I do. One of the books that I love is um, Ohana Means Family. Um, in Hawaii. It's written by Ilama Lomas and illustrated by Kennard Pack. I love the just the process and it's uh, building up rhyme. So they go, this is the kalo to make the poi for our Oana, Ohana's luau. So poi, if you've ever been to Hawaii, is the kind of like this, kind of like, um, like a mesh up taro plant that they it becomes really um soft and um this is the man making the poi but the kalo is the um the taro and it just shows the process of it being grown in the mud and who takes care of it and how it's grown and then the family that um gather together to share the food and um, drinks and everything. And it's really just a wonderful book to share about a culture, but also just family. And it's wonderfully illustrated. I love um, um, the taro plant and how it's depicted and drawn in the picture and how the kids and the family work together to, um, you know, to um, provide for each other. And it's also the stories that are told around and of course, the scene that we all wish is happening um, soon, um, that we can have our families and friends gather again over dinner. And um, the and the note from the author and the note um, on Kalo and Poi is really wonderful to read about too. Um, so um, if you go to Asian markets, you can far, properly find Taro. Um, it's a like a it's a root this taro plant and it's really cool looking and they made it into chips now so you can find that also but we use the stems and the root and you can use the leaf to wrap things up and it's really an awesome um, plant to think about and then my last book our favorite day of the year written by A.E. Ali illustrated by Raheli Jamapur Bell it's beautiful. I love the end paper illustration. It has all the um, different holidays from different culture, but it's a, mainly about the kindergartners who are meeting for the first time, and they their teacher asks them to do a show and tell of their favorite holiday um, or favorite day of the year, not just holiday. So you can pick any day that's going to be your favorite, and then the class gets to celebrate it with you. So of course. I love these, the illustration of the poor, the four boys. They're so different, but they're all in kindergarten. They all like their teachers and they're all thinking like, what can they probably could possibly find to celebrate? But they do. There's a little boy, Id um, Mubarak. It's a Musas, that's his favorite holiday and shows. But as the four boys celebrate all the different, um, holidays, I noticed there's a commonality throughout the celebration. They all involve food and getting together and celebrating with families and sharing. And it's such a wonderful book as the boy. And then one of the boy, his family, Kevin, ce celebrate Pi Day on March 14th. Pi Day is 3.14 is a very important number in math. And on that day, his family, they make different kinds of pies and they learn about scientists and this discovery. And so it's really awesome to just celebrate. Think of a day. I can't wait for 2021 to just pick a day that's going to be my favorite and make something or to bring it and share it with 
either my coworkers, my family, or just have a get together and to share it with your friends is also, you know, just being able to celebrate with each other. It's awesome. So that's my favorite book so far of 2021. Danae, what's your favorite? What is going to be your favorite day in 2021? Hmm. Well, it's not a shared holiday <laughs> for me. Well, I am very, I'm looking forward to celebrating my son's birthday um, this year because last year we weren't really able to start it because it was the start of COVID. So this year I'm going to be very excited to celebrate it. Um, hopefully we can actually just go out and do something fun. Um, but my second would be Christmas. I love Christmas. Just the whole lights and um, decorations and spending time with family and ornaments. So that is mine. What is your favorite day going to be for 2021? I'm going to look so forward to having people come into my branch again at Ruth Bach Library mm -hmm. and just having children being able to browse through the books um, but probably just having a normal day where we don't have to stress about staying apart, but, you know, um, having that option if we choose to, but um, just celebrating uh, any day without COVID is going to be my favorite day of the year, probably. That would be like the day we'll remember. <laughs> yes, right? So um, this for picture this, if you're interested in any of the books we've talked about, you know, um, Danae is going to show us how you can look up um, um, the books in our catalogs. For this month's picture book um, search, you can just type in one word, picture this 0121 for January 21. Let me share the screen. Okay. I actually turned off my video, but I am back. So we can, I'm going to type in Picture This 2021, and you can see all of the um, books that we talked about. Um, oh. Is it 0121 for January 2021? Oh, <laughs> oh, I am still in, um, I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> there you go. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Yay. It's so awesome. Yeah. Now, if you want to just type, you know how we pick picture books um, to share, we try to go for the latest books. If you're just interested in other picture books, um, you can also use our catalog to find out what's being ordered and get it ahead of us. Maybe um, you'll find books that we're going to review even before we get it. By putting it on order, you just type in picture books or just book actually. And then you, um, if you just take, type in picture book and do a search. If you go to search and then um, in the result, you see like sort by filters, you can click on date and that will show you the latest book that's being ordered for the um, library collection picture book collection. It even, um, you know, even before the book is um, ready to um, um, sh um, be circulated, as soon as we put the book on order that we're going to get it, you can see what we're going to purchase for the library. So that's a really awesome way to get the latest book for those preschool or really avid picture book readers. So you can get your hands on a brand new book. Yeah, and <laughs> I was like, come on, load. so. Yeah. There it is. It has the most current book that we have is in our picture mm -hmm. book. And then if you keep scrolling down, you can see all of the other books that we had ordered in 2020 mm -hmm. um, going by date. So yeah, if you yeah. Remember, this is a great way of trying to find um, new books that we have that uh, usually if you come into the library, they're in a specific place. But since you can't do that right now, um, we are showing you how to find it on the catalog. Yeah, so if you, are you looking for a specific author or subject, you can always click on date and that will sort it from the, or, um, the latest book first so that you get the newest item and then you can put a request in for the book. So this is it for our year for picture this. 
Okay, and so January 21st, we'll see you sometimes. Um, well, stay safe and healthy this new year. I hope you guys will see you next month. All right. Bye, Janaya. Bye. Bye.